What's up guys, Hurricane Liz here, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through my absolute must-have tool for merch. Now, if you haven't actually got this tool yet, I highly recommend, if any tool, you get this one. And the reason for it is it has a ton of features all in one, everything that we need, and it has some hidden features that most people don't even know are actually on there. So in today's actual walkthrough, I'm gonna take you to the, through the first half of those features because as I said before, there's so many on there that you might not even realize that they're on there. So let's walk through my favorite tool of all to use for merch, that is Merch Informer. And I'm gonna show you some hidden gems in there that can help you make more money on your merch business. So let's go ahead and jump into my screen share and get started. Okay, so let's get started with the Merch Informer walkthrough and review and show you all the available features that it actually has. And trust me when I say it has a ton and it is extremely valuable. It's worth the actual money. If you take a look at the pricing, you can get the starter version for $9.99 a month. This is for people that are brand spanking new. I would um, probably say that that's okay, but really where you're gonna get more bang for the buck is $19.99. Again, with $19.99, you get access to everything. So I do recommend that if you're going to start this business, you make an investment in your business by putting $20 per month. And that will also light a fire under your ass to actually take some action and get some designs up. Because at the end of the day, you're not going to be paying $20 a month for nothing. That's just senseless, right? Okay, so going back to that, and as I said before, there is a, a link at the bottom where I will get a small commission if you decide to actually go through me. Um, so take a look at this. Well, if we start from the left, they do have a pretty comprehensive number of tutorials that are pretty good. The guy that actually created this is a merch by Amazon seller. He's actually sold a merch account for as much as something like six figures. So he knows what he's talking about. He's a pretty good uh, t-shirt designer and he kind of understands the merch game. And once you understand the merch game, anything is possible as long as you keep making t-shirts. It's very simple. So that is the tutorials you can knock yourself out while looking through those but let's jump straight into the tools and the first tool that is on there is the actual merchant search so what this can do is this can let's say you you're out there and you're looking and let's just do the example as I as I talk about this let's say we're out there we're looking and we're doing research on the St. Patrick's Day niche and we want to see how many merch shirts and I'm talking about merch that's why I use merch research to just see merch shirts how many merch shirts people are selling like this is obviously Nickelodeon um, th these are St. Patrick's Day shirts, which that's, they use the name of the holiday to actually name their shirt, St. Patrick's Day Lucky Company, which is a little bit better name than St. Patrick's Day shirts. So St. Patrick's Day Lucky Company, we can actually use them and search for their shirts. So I'm going to just copy them, but let's just keep going. St. Patrick's Day Green is the brand name. Here's again, St. Patrick's Day Lucky Company. Lucky Irish shirt is a good one. And again, here's St. Patrick's Day Lucky Company. So these guys seem to really know what they're doing. Like they are just, that is a fantastic name for an actual shirt brand is particularly for a brand of St. Patrick's Day shirts. So I'm going to put in their name and I'm going to want it to pull back like their shirts. And as you can see right here, Merch Informer is telling me that this data will be available in 30 some seconds. All right. So it finally pulled it up. Um, it took a while, but here we have St. Patrick's Day Lucky Company and all their actual shirts. As we can see, it says here that they've got 30 shirts with the lowest price being $13.99. Highest price being $19.99, and here's the actual usual keywords that they use. Their average price is $17.48, and their average BSR is $456K. So 30 shirts is a tremendous amount of shirt, and they're all selling fairly well. And you'll notice it's pretty evident what their actual strategy is. They start at $13.99, uh, which will be about a dollar profit. And as soon as the shirt warms up and they get some reviews, they raise it as high as to $19.99. Like this one's $19.99, so's this one, so's floss like a boss. Um, so uh, these are at $18.99 now. They don't have that many reviews, but my guess is that they're selling all right. $87,000, this one is pretty soon gonna be $19.99. Uh, this one's $19.96. And you see that they're selling a tremendous amount of shirts. Like this leprechaun is now $18.99, but they do a pretty solid job and they have a pretty good idea of how to make these shirts and a pretty cool brand name. So they're doing pretty darn good. This is a great actual store to model and I just managed to find it just by looking um, 
through all the different things, right? And, and seeing what popped up. Lucky Saurus is like something that's pretty cool. Let's see if we can find a shirt that they have for $13.99. Um, it looks like this one would be one of them. No reviews available for this product, so it probably hasn't sold that much, and that's why they have it so low. If we take a look at this one, this one has not sold either. So that seems to be their strategy. It has one estimated sale. It is price low until they start selling and then start slowly, gradually raising up the actual price of them. So pretty cool in general, if you ask me, like now they're experimenting with these dog breeds. And so they're really doing a lot of different really cool things. It's definitely a great one to, to actually look at. And again, as you come across merchants, you can actually just use this merchant search put it in there and search and see what pops up. So that is the merchant search. And the last thing to mention before we stop there is that usually this comes in way of the best BSR. So 19,000 um, and it goes on up and higher and higher. And so it shows their best selling shirts first, followed by the shirts that aren't selling very much. And that's kind of how it's ordered. So it's pretty useful information. Uh, the second tab in merchant formal is this thing called product search. And all this basically is, is you can search based on t-shirts, uh, keywords. So for example, if I wanted to search St. Patrick's Day, a couple of examples come up. Um, let's just say I wanted to search St. Patrick's Day shirt. I'll make it more uh, specific here on the second search. But the first one, I just want a broad overview of the St. Patrick's Day niche. All right, so now it brought back the shirts. And again, it's gonna display the shirts that it finds that are actually coming back for this particular keyword in order of BSR. And again, the great thing about this is not necessarily just searching for it, because you can do that on Amazon, but it's the actual results. The results will come back and they'll tell you what the lowest price, what the highest price is and an average price. So you can always figure out, do I want to start at the average price? Do I want to start at a lower price? And the average BSR. And the other fantastic thing is it gives you all of these keywords, which you can use in the future when you create your listings and or um, just to be able to see like what is selling that's hot. There might be one word that stands out like birthday with St. Patrick's Day, a clover with St. Patrick's Day. So that could give you some ideas for design. So that is the product search portion. Now the Merch Hunter, I'm gonna go ahead and save for another actual video. However, you've seen me use this countless amount of time and it is my go-to tool to actually find trending topics as well as holidays. It's the best tool out there um, that I use for that, but I will be showing you guys another tool next week that I also use and I think you'll enjoy that just as much. Now in terms of favorites, here you can just pretty much add a category and the categories that you can add could just be something like, let's say you wanna do St. Patrick's Day and you wanna add St. Patrick's Day as a category, you can save it and you can actually start adding shirts to this actual list. Now, once you get these all in a list, you can download that list and use that list to train your employees, but it's pretty simple now. You can go into St. Patrick's Day and you can, as you look at some of these actual shirts, let's go back in there and add some of these shirts to favorites. I can add this to my favorites and now it'll ask me where, to, where do I wanna put it? And I'm gonna put it in St. Patrick's Day and I'm gonna hit okay. And now what I can do with this is once it's in my favorites, I can download this product list, St. Patrick's Day, and what'll happen is it'll give me a spreadsheet of this information and I can give this to my VA and tell them I want a t-shirt these are the t-shirts of the day I want you to create t-shirts modeled after this one and now they can come back and give me what they came up with so every day you can automatically do this and have a list for your VAs to execute on and you can give them ideas that you found while you were hunting out there on merch and you can also give them the task of going in there and finding their favorites and doing that and just sort of creating a system so that you have a non-stop supply of t-shirts being loaded up into your store all right so the next one that i wanted to talk about is the competition checker and the great thing about the competition checker is once again if we go into saint patrick's day and we look at that, it's gonna come back and pull some data. And this is really interesting data that we can use in when we make decisions as to which shirts we create. And the most important thing that I actually grabbed from this is the estimated merchant count with phrase in their brand name, because I look to try to somehow integrate the brand name with a phrase from the current holiday. So in the case of the St. Patrick's Day Lucky Company, that was a pretty genius name. And now they get the bonus for ranking for that as well as it sounds like a pretty good brand name where you would buy St. Patrick's Day shirt from. So again, on this particular um, tool, I don't really pay attention to the rest of it because I don't find that it's very accurate and I'm not 100% sure what the A means. 
Um, but this is the big thing that I pay attention to. I want to know how many other people are actually using this in their brand name. And there's 186 brand names with the keyword term St. Patrick's Day. And again, you can look through here again, grab more ideas. These are the best sellers in the St. Patrick's Day niche in general. And not a surprise to see that SpongeBob's Patrick is at the top. That is definitely a um, pretty clear cut winner in all the shirts if you ask me. All right, so the next actual tool that I like to use on this is Keyword Finder. And the fantastic thing about Keyword Finder is that once again, you can do two things. You can save keywords to your favorites, but you can also just have it tell you what other keywords there are related to this. Okay, once I entered St. Patrick's Day, you can see that here's all the other keywords that are related to it. St. Patrick's Day accessories, St. Patrick's Day apparel, St. Patrick's Day apparel women, and you can see what their actual search volume is, as well as the level of competition. You could add them to your favorites as well, and you could do that. You could download these results. There's really a lot of things and a lot of pieces of information here that you could actually begin to look into as, as you do this. Like you can add this to, let's say I wanted a pair of women to add that, it's gonna add it to favorites. If I wanna go more detailed into this, it's gonna use this as the seed keyword, just as I did the St. Patrick's Day, and it's gonna pull back even more data. And the other fantastic thing is um, that you've also got the, this graph, estimated monthly sales volume for this particular keyword, competition score, it is again, like I haven't read too much into the competition score. My guess is that A means that it is okay, but it could also mean the opposite. So I haven't looked at that. And then it'll also give you related keywords so that you too can use keywords like this. And again, when you're creating your listing, this is invaluable to be able to give you keywords so that you know what to put in your listing. And then lastly, it does a brief trademark check for that particular term. And so altogether pretty cool to just get ideas for t-shirts as well as to do some initial research for the actual niche. And then lastly on this, if you go into your favorite keywords, that's where all the keywords that you're actually creating are saved. So that's pretty awesome. And once again, you can do that scan. Anytime you see this little eye in Merch Informer, I find that it's pretty valuable. The other spot that you always get the eye is within Merch Hunter. And let me briefly at least show you just that so you can see what I'm talking about. Anytime I see the little eye, the little information tab, I quickly click on it because I wanna know what is this all about. Right here, it's actually, uh, this little eye right here. And this little eye will give you some invaluable data with this. It'll even show you this graph as to how it's sold in the past and how it's selling right now. So you can have a good idea of that. And the graph also includes the price, what the price has been. As you can see, uh, Disney or whoever does SpongeBob did this at 1998 to start and it stuck through 1998 until they moved it higher now for St. Patrick's Day because they realized that the demand is huge. And you can see in red, are the trademark uh, names. So Nickelodeon, SpongeBob, and for some reason, Heather Gray must be, but Amazon puts that in there. So um, you would have to investigate this further here, as well as it gives you the features and a bunch of good things like that. So that's the good thing about the eye thing. All right, so the last thing that we wanna go into in this actual video is the listing optimizer. And what that basically will do is you can enter your ace in here. We'll, we'll just enter any ace in here. We'll, we'll enter the SpongeBob. We'll actually do this. We'll enter this one here. Since in general, I think these guys are doing a lot of things correctly. We're gonna go ahead and enter that ASIN right here. We're gonna leave the marketplace and we're gonna put St. Patrick's Day. And we're gonna search. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna bring us back this data as to how well it's optimized for the keyword St. Patrick's Day. So you can see, found a match in the title, match in the features, match in description, um, description over a thousand characters is not, and the optimization is 65%. So in the opinion of Merch Informer, they could have done a little better job on the actual listing itself. But let's take a look at the number one selling shirt out of curiosity to see how well they did selling this particular actual shirt. So let's go ahead and look up St. Patrick's Day on here, and we're gonna look for that shirt, which was the SpongeBob. All right, so here is the SpongeBob right here. So I'm gonna just grab the actual ASIN and now I'm gonna go and take it over into this listing check and I'm gonna go in and put St. Patrick's Day and I'm gonna hit start and it's gonna go back and do the exact same thing for the number one selling shirt in the niche right now and we're about to find out how well they are optimized. So 
if anything that you can take from this particular tip, that is try and optimize your actual listing for that keyword. So you can use this to check that. So here we have that it's 0% optimized. I mean, it's just basically selling on sheer popularity. And that is people love SpongeBob. All right, so the last thing I wanted to cover in this is the synonym suggest. Here is in case you need synonyms or ideas for other keywords you can include in your listing. All right, so I finally did it right. I put in the word dog and here is what it comes back with. These are all the actual synonyms related to dog. And again, put one at a time or separate by spaces to enter. So it's gotta be like this. It cannot be with a, with a comma as I tried the first time. So I can call back dog and cat and here it'll actually separate them. Or you could do dog, cat, and mouse just like this. Now, if it doesn't recognize the word, it's not gonna say anything or it's gonna grab one word that it recognized from there. Like it'll take them as this group. Let's see if we can actually get it to do St. Patrick's Day and it took the day out of it. So it only recognized day, it did not recognize Saint or Patrick's. So again, that's how it works. This will give you a countless amount of ideas to shove into your keyword backend and or your actual bullets. So that's it for this video. In the next Merchant Former walkthrough, I'll go over the remaining features that we have in Merchant Former and I'll go and guide you through those step by step. Again, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. I personally answer all those. And as usual, if you like the content, please subscribe. I'll bring much more to y'all in the near future. I'll see y'all next time.